The prologue to the movie begins in 1969, when a family desperately seeks the aid of Sean Sandina, a powerful medium, as they desperately need her help. Their son is haunted by a strange creature. He exists in fear, thinking that something terrible is coming for him due to his act of stealing a silver necklace from a gypsy wagon. Recognizing the seriousness of the situation, Sean swiftly takes the boy inside, but the malevolent curse pursuing him continues to grow stronger. Unfortunately, before Sean can perform any intervention, the curse interrupts her session and drags the boy down to hell. Sean looks down at the horror unfolding before her eyes, and swears that she will face off against the creature again. Fast forward to the present day. In the big city, a young woman named Christine has moved from a small town to work as a loan officer at a bank. Known for her kindness and helpful nature, she often finds herself being taken advantage of by her boss and co-workers, who view her as a pushover. Christine goes to ask her boss about the assistant manager position at the bank, which is free and on the line. Even though Christine's co-worker Stu is relatively new to the job, he proves to be quite ambitious, making her boss consider offering him the promotion over Christine. Her boss asks her to take a break, and she goes to visit her boyfriend named Clay, who works as a professor at a university. During their lunch date, she surprises him with a rare coin she discovered at the bank, knowing it would be a valuable addition to his nerdy coin collection. However, as she leaves Clay's office, she unintentionally overhears him conversing with his snobbish mother. The elitist woman expresses her disapproval of Christine, belittling her for her rural upbringing on a farm. Despite dating Christine for a year and genuinely loving her, Clay wishes for his parents to finally meet her at dinner, hoping they will come to accept her. With a broken heart, she comes back to the office. To add to her already difficult day, an elderly lady named Mrs. Kanish visits the bank, seeking another loan extension on her already due credit. Mrs. Kanish has already received two extensions, but is facing financial hardships due to her illness and desperately needs another extension. In a difficult position, Christine decides to discuss the matter with her boss, seeking guidance on what to do about Mrs. Kanish's loan extension request. Her boss, wanting to test her ability to make tough decisions, leaves the choice up to her whether to grant the extension or proceed with the repossession of the elderly woman's home. Feeling the pressure, Christine knows she must choose wisely. Feeling the weight of the responsibility along with the assistant manager position, Christine informs Mrs. Kanish that her request for another loan extension has been denied. The elderly woman becomes visibly upset and pleads with Christine, even to the extent of dropping to her knees, begging for help in her time of need. The emotional plea puts Christine in an even more challenging and heart-wrenching situation. After Christine continues to deny Mrs. Kanish's pleas, the elderly woman becomes deeply offended and feels humiliated. In her anger and frustration, she tries to physically attack Christine. Security intervenes and forcibly removes Mrs. Kanish from the scene, while Christine is left shaken by the encounter. Despite the distressing situation, Christine's boss commends her for making the right decision in the best interest of the bank. Later, he rewards her efforts by providing her with the files for an important client that she successfully secured for the bank. Furthermore, he hints that she has risen to the top of the list for the assistant manager position. This momentary turn of events makes Christine feel slightly happier than before. The workday comes to an end, and Christine leaves the office. But her little happy day takes a terrifying turn when Mrs. Kanish pays Christine a visit in her car after work. Accusing Christine of shaming her, Mrs. Kanish grabs her hair and whispers curses in her ear. A struggle ensues, and Christine manages to slam her car into another vehicle, sending the old woman flying to the front seat. Despite the impact, Mrs. Kanish is relentless and continues her attack attempting to bite Christine's face, even though she lost her fake teeth during the struggle. Fighting back, Christine pushes her away, but Mrs. Kanish persists and puts her dentures back in, ready to attack once more. In self-defense, Christine shoves a ruler into Mrs. Kanish's mouth, trying to fend her off. Eventually, Christine manages to push the woman out of the car, but this only fuels Mrs. Kanish's anger. In a fit of rage, she breaks the car window and drags Christine out of the vehicle. In a final act of malevolence, Mrs. Kanish rips off a button from Christine's coat, places a Lamia curse on it, and gives it back to her. With a sinister warning, Mrs. Kanish whispers to the woman that it will be Christine who comes begging to her soon, suggesting that she will face dire consequences due to the curse. The encounter leaves Christine shaken and filled with fear. Soon the police come, and Clay also comes running to his poor assaulted girlfriend. Together they go away from the place of the incident, and Clay keeps comforting her. As they pass by a fortune teller's shop, she urges him to go inside. Although Clay is skeptical and doesn't believe in such things, he agrees to pay for the session. The fortune teller, Ram Jass, takes Christine's hand and immediately notices the missing button from earlier. As he holds her hand, strange and unsettling phenomena begin to occur in his shop. He gazes into the unknown and becomes visibly frightened when he sees the powerful demon that she has been cursed with. Feeling alarmed, Ram Jass insists that Christine and Clay leave his shop and offers them a full refund. Despite his unease, he still answers Christine's questions about what he saw during the session. Ram Jass explains that someone has placed a curse on her. Clay, trying to comfort her, dismisses Ram Jass as a scam artist and encourages Christine not to be afraid of anything he says. Despite Clay's attempt to reassure her, 
Christine can't shake off the fear and unease brought on by Ram Jass's revelations. The poor woman feels terrified to the core. Clay soon drops her off at her house and goes to deal with her car. Now, all alone at home, the night proves to be a harrowing experience for Christine as strange occurrences begin in her home. The house starts making eerie sounds, as if someone is attempting to break in, and suddenly all the windows open simultaneously, frightening her little kitten as well. The atmosphere becomes increasingly eerie, and Christine spots a demonic figure lurking in the shadows, which then attacks her. Some time later, an extremely concerned Clay finally comes over to take care of Christine. However, when she tells him that it wasn't Mrs. Canish who entered her house, he doesn't believe her and calls a doctor to assess her condition. The doctor attributes Christine's experiences to paranoia brought on by the stress she faced that day. During the night, Christine is disturbed by a fly circling around her as she sleeps. It enters her mouth, startling her awake. To her horror, she sees Mrs. Ganesh lying beside her. The old woman launches another attack, attempting to bite her face and then proceeds to vomit ugly insects all over her. The experience is so terrifying that Christine gasps awake from the nightmare next to Clay, struggling to comprehend what is real and what was merely a horrifying dream. The following day, Clay takes Christine to work and playfully warns her not to upset any old ladies again. Once she's at her desk, Stu approaches and asks her for help with some bank-related matters. As Christine starts explaining the problem to him, she is horrified when Stu's hand suddenly transforms into Mrs. Ganesh's hand. Alarmed, Christine stands up and firmly tells him to keep his hands off her desk. In the midst of this strange encounter, Christine's phone rings, and as she answers it, blood begins to drip from her nose. Her boss rushes over to assist her, but then an inhuman amount of blood starts to spray all over him. Distraught and terrified, Christine panics and quickly leaves the scene, inadvertently creating an opportunity for Stu to steal the important client files from her desk. What a jerk. Feeling desperate and fearful of the curse's impact, Christine seeks out Mrs. Ganesh for help, just as the old woman ominously predicted. However, when she arrives at the house, she is greeted not by the old woman herself, but by her granddaughter. The granddaughter informs Christine that she is not welcome there, but after hearing her pleas for assistance, she reluctantly allows her inside. As Christine navigates the house to find the old woman, a group of people suddenly pushes her inside, all of them laughing. To Christine's horror, she realizes that she has unintentionally walked into Mrs. Ganesh's funeral and she stumbles, falling right into the woman's body. The situation at Mrs. Ganesh's funeral takes a horrifying turn when the table they are on breaks, causing both Christine and the corpse to fall. As they fall, Mrs. Ganesh's body ends up on top of Christine, and something nasty leaks into her mouth. Men at the funeral attempt to remove the body from Christine, but it violently grabs her hair, ripping out a piece of it. Mrs. Ganesh's granddaughter coldly tells Christine that she deserves whatever is coming to her. Poor Christine. In desperation, she returns to the fortune teller Ram Jass, seeking answers and a solution. He explains that the entity tormenting her is the Lamia, or the Black Goat, summoned only to perform dark and malevolent deeds. The Lamia initially appears as a sinister spirit, tormenting its victim for three days before coming to claim the soul of the cursed object's owner. Christine realizes that the cursed object is the button from Mrs. Ganesh. Hesitant and fearful of the potential consequences, Christine asks Ram Jass how she can rid herself of the curse. The seer suggests appeasing the demon with a blood sacrifice, but Christine refuses, finding such an idea repulsive. Nevertheless, she accepts the book Ram Jass offers her as a possible solution. Ram Jass cryptically warns her that when the time comes, she may be surprised by what she is willing to do to escape Lamia's grasp. Filled with trepidation and uncertainty, Christine faces an agonizing and imminent struggle against the dark forces that seek to claim her soul. Back at home, Christine desperately flips through the book, trying to find a way to escape the malevolent presence of the Lamia. Her kitten mouse, sensing the growing danger. Suddenly, the sinister sounds of cracks and crunches fill her house once more, and Lamia's shadow appears more ominous and aggressive than before, relentlessly hunting her throughout her home. Terrified, Christine runs upstairs to her room and locks herself inside, attempting to call Clay for help, but he doesn't answer. As Lamia's hooves become visible outside her door, Mrs. Ganesh's haunting face appears on her phone screen, screaming at her. The demon's shadow morphs into grotesque arms, reaching out to grasp Christine, who narrowly escapes its clutches. In a panic, she tries to escape through the window, but Lamia is there too, sending her into a state of sheer terror. The demon seizes her, violently spinning her across the room before flinging her into an opposing wall. Exhausted and broken, Christine is left to face the horrifying reality that the curse is becoming more powerful and inescapable, pushing her to the brink of despair. She quickly takes hold of a knife and cries out for her cat to come. As her cat arrives, she does the very thing she swore she would never do. Taking the knife, she cries as she takes the life of her little pet. Afterwards, she buries the poor thing in her yard. Meanwhile, Clay arrives at Christine's house and notices the bloodstain on her sweater. Concerned, he inquires about it, and Christine quickly reassures him, telling him it's just tomato juice. Despite her explanation, Clay can sense that something is troubling her, and suggests postponing the dinner with his parents, considering everything she has been through lately. 
However, Christine insists that they should still attend the dinner. She believes that her recent actions, perhaps referring to her attempts to confront the curse, have resolved her problems with the demon, and that she shouldn't let fear dictate her decisions. Despite Clay's reservations, he agrees to support her choice and decides to not postpone the dinner with his parents. Despite the initial tension caused by Clay's mother's disapproval, Christine puts on a brave face and wears a dress that Clay loves, trying to make the best of the situation. As they arrive at the dinner, Clay introduces Christine to his parents, and his mother immediately starts giving her a hard time, particularly eyeing the cake Christine has made for them with disdain. Despite the initial rough start, his mother reluctantly accepts the cake and takes it to the dining room, followed by the rest of the family. As they go towards the dinner table, their cat Hakuba reacts negatively to Christine, hissing at her, which adds to the uneasy atmosphere. Clay's mother is puzzled by the cat's behavior, not understanding why their usually sweet feline would react this way. Throughout the dinner, Clay tries his best to highlight Christine's achievements and impress his mother. However, she continues to criticize and heckle Christine, making her feel uncomfortable. Despite the challenges, Christine remains composed and explains in detail what she does as a loan officer, hoping to impress her future in-laws. However, things take a positive turn when Christine opens up about her family and her mother's struggles with alcoholism. To her surprise, Clay's mother reveals that her own father was also an alcoholic, but unlike Christine, she never had the courage to admit it openly. She admires Christine for her honesty and strength, and in that moment, they find a connection. The tension at the dinner table eases as they all enjoy a slice of Christine's cake, including Clay's mother, who now appreciates its taste. However, amidst the laughter and conversation, Christine suddenly hears the eerie sounds of the Lamia once more, seemingly near the door. She asks Clay if he heard anything, but he hasn't noticed anything unusual. As Christine goes to eat her slice of cake, she is horrified to see a fly moving inside it, and Mrs. Ganesh's eye appears in the piece. Reacting with a mix of fear and determination, she stabs the cake with a fork, causing it to ooze goo and blood onto the plate. Despite the disturbing occurrence, Christine tries to act as if everything is normal, even when the cake seems to absorb her fork. When Clay's mother asks her a question she doesn't understand, Christine gives a wrong answer, prompting Clay to correct her. As she takes a bite from the cake, she begins to choke on it and coughs out a fly, shocking both Clay's parents and ruining their appetite for the dessert. Suddenly, an unbearable noise and banging on the door overwhelm Christine, pushing her to the brink of desperation. In a moment of panic, she grabs a glass and hurls it at the door, screaming for whoever or whatever is tormenting her to leave her alone. Clay rushes to calm her down, but she is deeply disturbed and decides to leave, storming out of the dining room. Clay's mother suggests he not follow Christine, believing that she is an abnormal girl. Frustrated and desperate, Christine goes back to the Sears shop that night and vents her anger, accusing him of leading her astray. Ram Jass calmly explains that they are dealing with elusive and powerful forces beyond their control, and there are no guaranteed solutions when confronting them. He tells her that she must communicate with the demon and persuade it to spare her soul, and that he knows someone who can help her with this daunting task. Skeptical of his claims, Christine finds it hard to believe that anyone can help her at this point. However, Ram Jass emphasizes that time is running out, and Lamia will come for her after the third day. He urges her to consider the woman he knows who can assist her, but warns that the price for such help will be substantial, as the person would also be placing themselves at great risk from the powerful demon. Realizing the urgency of her situation, Christine asks how much she will need to pay for this help. Ram Jass reveals that she will have to provide $10,000 in cash, and the payment must be made the following day. The next day, Christine reports to work to discuss an advance she wants for the assistant manager job with her employer. However, he warns her that the crucial transaction with the customer was scrapped, and that as a result, the bank's branch will face significant difficulties. To cut to the chase, she won't be receiving the promotion, but Stu will if the job opens up again. After work, Christine begins gathering everything in her home that she can sell. Ganesh's spirit badly assaults her, and shoves its fist down her poor neck while she retrieves specific objects from her shed. When Christine strikes it with an anchor, its eyeballs spatter all over her face, but soon disappear along with the spirit. Later, Christine takes her belongings to the pawn shop, hoping to get enough money to pay for the help she needs to confront Lamia. However, the pawn shop owner is unwilling to negotiate, offering her only $3,800 for all her possessions. Disheartened, and knowing it's not enough to solve her dire situation, she reluctantly accepts the money. Leaving the pawn shop, Christine finds herself overwhelmed by a mixture of frustration and despair. She comes back home and takes a moment to compose herself. Sitting alone with her ice cream, she allows herself to cry, feeling the weight of the daunting circumstances that surround her. As Clay arrives at Christine's house, he surprises her with the news that he paid Ram Jass for the assistance she needed, even though he may not fully believe in the supernatural forces at play. He tells her that he trusts her, and knows that she genuinely believes in what she's facing. Clay expresses his desire to support and take care of her, demonstrating his unwavering love for her. Later, Clay drops off Christine at Sean Sandina's house, where the experienced medium is already waiting for her. Sean introduces herself as someone who has dealt with the Lamia before, although not without past losses. She lost a young boy's soul to the demon, and now seeks redemption by finally defeating it, with Christine's help. Sean leads Christine and Ram Jass to her special ritual room, 
a place carefully chosen due to its convergence of energies that can open a doorway between worlds. As they gather around the table, Sean's assistant, Mylosh, brings in a goat to be part of the session. Sean explains that their goal is to trap the Lamia inside when it appears, using the animal as a vessel to contain the malevolent force. Mylosh will slaughter the goat when Christine puts her hand on it, in order to deal with the demon once and for all. The atmosphere in the room is tense and solemn as they prepare for the summoning. Knowing that the stakes are high and they must act with precision and determination to confront the demon and protect Christine's soul from its grasp. The room is charged with an intense and eerie energy as the spirits make their presence known. Following Ram Jass's instructions, Christine tries to open herself up to the ghosts, repeating the words he provides. Her voice trembles with both fear and determination as she chants for the spirit to enter her soul. As the session progresses, the spirits manifest themselves in various forms, but still, there is no sign of the Lamia. Christine observes the spirits in the room. Until Sean intervenes and drives them away, sensing the imminent arrival of the malevolent entity. Suddenly, the presence of the Lamia becomes palpable and it possesses Sean's body, confirming its arrival. Ram Jass dares to ask the demon what it desires, and the chilling response is that it craves Christine's soul. Though she denies her initial refusal to make the tough decision regarding the loan, the seer quiets her, choosing to converse with the demon himself. Ram Jass seeks to find a way to dissuade Lamia from taking Christine's soul, asking the entity how they can change its mind about a seemingly insignificant woman. In an attempt to thwart its intentions, Christine tries to place Sean's hand on the goat, hoping to trap the demon inside the animal. However, the Lamia mocks Ram Jass's pleas and appears resolute in its sinister goal. Christine eventually manages to place her hand on the goat before she reaches for her, trapping the Lamia there and infuriating it more. When Mylosh goes over with the knife to slaughter it, the goat bites his hand and Lamia possesses Mylosh's body. The spirit now chases Christine, and Ram Jass attempts to drive it away but it merely attacks him and dances on top of a burning table. The seer once again tells it to depart, but receives yet another thrashing. As the confrontation with Lamia intensifies, it goes to attack Christine. The demon refuses to accept Christine's cat as a sacrifice, vomiting the poor animal out of its mouth. The sight is both distressing and unsettling. Ram Jass wakes Sean, and she finally banishes the spirit from Mylosh and the room before she attacks Christine. Their victory is short-lived, as shortly after, Sean suffers a heart attack and they call an ambulance for her. The seer attempts to save Sean, but she still passes away. After Sean's body is taken away, Ram Jass delivers a grim revelation to Christine. He informs her that Sean's banishment of the Lamia was only temporary, and the demon will return for the owner of the cursed object by the end of the night. There seems to be only one way to potentially save herself from the malevolent entity's grasp. She must give the accursed object to someone as a gift. As Clay drives Christine home, she discovers that the envelope containing the button has gone missing in the shuffle of document. But as she searches through her belongings, she believes she has found it again. Realizing the weight of the impending danger, Christine makes a bold decision to protect herself and Clay. As they reach home, she shares her plan with Clay, suggesting they meet at the station the next morning for a vacation. However, the weight of the decision weighs heavily on Christine's mind during the night. She grapples with the difficult task of deciding who she can give the curse button to as a gift while she sits drinking coffee, knowing that their life will be literal hell afterward. At one point, Christine considers giving the cursed object to Stu, but she changes her mind when the time comes. Seeking a different solution, she consults with Ram Jass again. Christine asks if she can gift the cursed object to someone who has already passed away, and after some research, he confirms it. With a daring plan in mind, she drives to the cemetery, where she digs up Kanish's grave and opens the wooden casket, revealing the deceased woman's body. Christine attempts to place the envelope inside the corpse's hand, but it feels as though there is resistance. Undeterred, she resorts to opening Ganesh's mouth with a shovel, making the gift official by declaring it to the heavens and shoving the envelope down the deceased woman's throat. After this unsettling act, Christine almost finds herself submerged in the rainwater pooled inside the grave, but manages to pull herself out, believing that she has finally solved her problem. Ah, uh, finally, the following morning, as she prepares to meet Clay at the station, she receives a voicemail from her boss about Stu's deceitful intentions. Stu attempted to steal the important client from Christine and broker a deal with another bank. As a result, her boss informs her that she will be receiving the assistant manager position as recognition of her integrity and dedication. Finally, some good news. Christine arrives at the station, relieved that everything seems to have resolved favorably. She happily meets Clay, who has planned to propose to her. They hug, and the atmosphere is cheerful, however it all changes once Clay surprises her by returning the envelope with the button. She had mistakenly taken the envelope with his coin from the car the previous night. Panic sets in, and Christine starts pulling back, inadvertently falling onto the train tracks. The ground suddenly catches fire as the gates to hell open, and the demon Lamia drags the girl down into the abyss. The movie ends with a crying Clay, who is watching on in horror and is unable to help her.